in your bathroom while you were shaving? Did you, did you stop shaving? Because that's not the reality of what we see here in Scripture. Every time, even here, you see a manifestation of an angel, and they're greatly afraid. When, when an angel or, or the Lord in his, in his glorified body, right? Holy, holy, holy. And yet we talk so nonchalantly. But he tells him, do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings and great joy. This Christmas and in the coming new year, there is so much to worry and fear. I mean, there is, there is so much worry and fear being pumped. Right? And we see it in our society. We see it on the news. But we must not forget this important truth. That Christ has come into the world. And even though this world, we may have trouble and tribulation. We can be of good cheer because Jesus, again, has overcome the world. And we are more than conquerors through him. So do not fall into the trap of fear that the world is producing, even through a virus or through climate change or through whatever else it is. Do not fear. Do not buy into all the fear that they are pumping. Do not be reckless. But don't live your life in fear. Uh, once again, in Hebrews, the only fear is the fear of death. But Christ has conquered that fear for us. The fear that the Bible says that held us all the days of our life in bondage. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind and of power. So let's walk in that victory. Let's walk in that freedom. There's no reason to fear death for the Christian. Reminds me of the great hymn that says, Behold him there, the risen Lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with himself I cannot die. My soul is purchased by his blood. My life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God. One with himself. I cannot die. My life is purchased by his blood. Christ. That is why we don't have fear. This is the good news of the gospel. This is the glad tidings and the peace that he brought to us on Christmas. Verse 12. And there will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Again, in that same hymn, a, a babe wrapped. He came as a babe. He came as a babe in a manger. Right? He didn't come on a horse, on a chariot, but he is coming back. And, he, and every eye will see him in the clouds. And he will come back to conquer. But the first time he came humble in humility, weak and meek and mild and lowly. Right? And he came as a babe. The hymn says, in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God and helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on the cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I stand. Fullness of God in helpless babe. Do not, the let, do not let the world steal your joy this Christmas. He came. They came with a message of joy. They came with a message of peace and goodwill towards men. Let us walk in that joy. Let us walk in that peace as a reality in our lives. Verse 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with them with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Again, here is the message. This is what he bought, brought on Christmas. Goodwill towards men and peace upon the earth. God has a multitude of heavenly hosts who worship him day and night. And he invites us to join in this worship of the one true God and his son, Jesus Christ, through his spirit. And in him, 
we will find a joy that the world cannot give us. And a peace that surpasses understanding. A love for neighbor as we do for ourselves. A good will toward men. This is the peace the world seeks and desires in vain. Because they are seeking it in all the wrong places. But they will never achieve it apart from Christ. This is the gift that he gives to his church and to his people. A peace that surpasses understanding. A joy even in the midst of pain and in trial and circumstances. Christ is the King of Peace. So the last few verses and in closing, verse 15 through 20. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem. And see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph with a babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they heard and seen and it was told from them. So in closing, I just want to draw your attention to a few points. Notice the different reactions to the birth of Christ. We've seen that there was a sense as we know it was proclaimed among kings. We know that King Herod, here's one response. What did he seek to do? He seek to murder the child. He seemed to murder the Christ child, the Savior, the Messiah, the King of the Jews, the King of the world. That's one response. There are those to this day who hate Christ, who hate God, and who hate His church, who hate His people. We see another response. We see a man at the inn, and there was no room for him in the inn. Many of us, there's no room for him in our lives. There's no room for him in our families. There's no room for him in our time and in our activities. That's another response that we still see to this day. There's no time. There's no room for Christ. The Messiah had come. The gift, the indescribable gift had come to this world. But there was no room for him. There was no time for him. We see that in the response of the innkeeper. He's, there was no room for him in the inn, therefore he was put out into a manger. We still have that response. But then we see the response of the shepherds. The shepherds here, they receive the proclamation of the good news. The angels proclaim the good news of good tidings and great joy and peace and this Messiah that has come, this child that has come, the Christ, and they receive it. But they don't just receive it, they also go and they respond to it, right? So they receive the message, right? But we also see them responding. They went out and they told all the things. They said they marveled and they rejoiced and they went and told what they had received. They reported, they received. And they, and they responded to the message. That is what God is calling us to do. Not just to be the hearers, not, but to receive it, to respond to it, and also to report it to others. That is the gift that we were given this Christmas in Jesus Christ. Do not let the world take your joy. There is much to worry about in a sense. But Jesus said, do not worry will not increase your statue even an inch. Your stature even an inch. Right? The, the birds of the air do not worry about what they're going to eat, what they're going to wear. All these things we're so worried about. We spend so much time and energy and focus on all these things that do not matter. What matters the most is where are we going to spend eternity? Okay. And that gift was given to us on Christmas through Christ. That if we would repent of our sins and put our faith in Christ, He will give us a new heart. A heart 
that responds to him like these shepherds that have received the message, but not just received it, they've responded to it. And then in responding to it, they also go and report it to others. That is how we should be, not like the innkeeper who is too busy, has no time or no room for Jesus in his life or in his heart. Let us be of good cheer. Let us not fear. Let us remember the great gift that God has given us in his son, Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. Merry Christmas. And may the Lord keep you. God bless you. Amen.